Greetings and welcome to Phantom's Edge. This is chapter two of this reading. The sun having risen high from the horizon, Kyle's ship anchored to hide itself from the docking bay. As the crew set everything up for any needs for a quick retreat, Kyle wrote out a letter on his captain's desk. Afterwards, he sealed it in an envelope and motioned out to ready himself to use a lifeboat with a small sail to disguise it and enter the city. He dragged another boat behind them empty for any supplies they needed, with only five other men that were of the Kanai's protection. However, there was also a boy traveling to the city with them, who was to play a small role for the captain. In the city, Kaio turned to one of his crew members and called out, Go to boy! Aye, Captain, the black-furred Rodenio mouse boy responded, who seemed to be no older than fourteen. First, Best not to say Captain out loud around these here parts. Second, Kaio handed his letter to the boy as he continued, Take this to the bureaucracy's headquarters. Don't tell them who you are, don't tell them where you are from, and don't tell them where the letter's from. Just hand it to them and say, To Miss Jacqueline. Can you do that, my boy? The boy smiled as he nodded his head with confidence, then took the letter to put it in a pouch at his right side. He quickly ran through the crowd to the bureau headquarters, jumping, dodging, and cutting through the highly crowded area with ease, intensely focused on his mission. As he watched the boy leave his sights, Kaio smiled and said, Good lad. He sure is, the crew member agreed. He then looked up at his captain and asked, You sure you're okay without us for today, sir? Still watching where the boy had jolted off to, Kaio nodded his head in response as he said, that I am. When the Rodenio boy reached the Bureau's headquarters, he settled himself as to not cause any suspicion and walked in as he dared not even glance into the eyes of the guards at the front entrance. Passing through the double doors, the boy motioned over to the information desk just in front of him. The light skin toned Hume sitting there stopped with writing something down as he noticed the boy, then lowered his pen as he closed his hands over the desk and aptly asked, Greetings, dear boy. How may I help you? The boy reached into his pouch at his right side with his left hand to give the chief petty officer Kayo's letter. The soldier glanced down at it and was about to say something to the boy, but was interrupted as the boy said, To Miss Jacqueline. The boy then quickly turned and walked away before the soldier could say anything. The soldier glanced back down at the envelope, ringing a small bell on his desk before returning back to his work. Seaman ran up to stand at attention at the chief petty officer's right side and said, Yes, sir. Please take this anonymous letter to Captain Jacqueline, will you, miss? Sir, the seaman replied, putting her feet together as she raised her right hand to salute her superior. She reached for the letter on the desk, then headed off to find the captain in question. In the confirmation room, the bureaucracy's head captains were in a meeting discussing matters about the top 10 most wanted pirates. They needed to stop them, but also put an end to piracy itself, once and for all. Halfway through the meeting, the seaman stepped in and quietly motioned over to a feminine canai jackal. The seaman handed the letter to the captain, saluted her superior, then headed out of the room without making any amount of disturbance. Jacqueline glanced down at the envelope, finding that it had nothing written on it, then went to open it to see what it was about. As she did, Vice Admiral Edison, Kanai Foxhound, looked over at her and asked, Something more important than piracy come to mind, Captain Jacqueline? Reading the letter, Jacqueline replied, Sir, if I may. She then put the letter in her pocket as she continued, I believe we should focus on taking out the lower ranked pirates as a means to send a message to the others. If they don't comply, Go up the list until only the most notorious, Captain Kayo, the dual-edged demon, is left standing. Yes, Captain Gregory, the masculine Kanai Dalmatian replied. If we immortalize the lower ranks, the higher ranks will not only be informed, as Captain Jacqueline said, but will also lose support and can be backed into a wall with no hope of escape. That'll make this demon person nothing more than a joke of a thief. Jacqueline glanced over at her colleague with an angry expression as Vice Admiral Edison said, Excellent. 
Gregory glanced over at his comrade with a smile towards her. Then the captain looked back at the vice admiral as he continued, Then as for your missions, you will all be set out to patrol the oceans and search for any and all pirates. You are the best of the best out at sea, compared equal only to each other. But next time, Miss Jacqueline, keep your personal matters aside till the end of the meeting. Understood? Yes, Admiral, the woman complied. Phantom's Edge. It was a place ships at sea, if ill-guided, may crash into the hidden jagged rocks along the coastline, far below the peak itself. The waves of the ocean struck the steep walls fiercely, able to kill any who swam its midst, making survival from a shipwreck nearly impossible. Jacqueline came to this peak, finding that the person she was to meet was indeed there. He stood with his hands folded in front of his stomach, staring out at the ocean as a light breeze blew by from his left. Jacqueline knew of this man, but gave no welcome as she walked over to stand at his right side. She stood up formally, as one of the military should, while the pirate kept his calm and casual stance. As Jacqueline stared out at the ocean as well, unmoved by its magnificent spectacle, Kaio smiled and said, It's been seven years, Jackie. And this, this is where it all started, where we first met, where we first kissed. Jacqueline glanced over at the man, noticing he was holding a jewelry box in his hands. Then she looked out at the ocean again and said, You shouldn't have asked for me to come, Kyle. You shouldn't be here. I shouldn't even be talking to you. You're the most wanted pirate in the entire vast sea. If any of the Bureau's troops were to find out that we even saw each other, me doing nothing to apprehend you, I'd not only be stripped of my rank, but they'd hang me for insubordination. Kayo handed the box to the woman as he said, Then please, take this. Jacqueline reached for the box with her right hand and held it at her lower torso level. Still watching the sea, as the man continued, It's the only thing left of you, Jackie. But I don't need it, of course, seeing as it was my gift to you once before. Kyle looked over at his love with a smile and continued, I don't know why you gave it back, but it doesn't matter. Jacqueline turned slightly to the man and bluntly said, Kyle, you're a pirate. You're a liar and a thief. Not to mention you're also a heartless murderer. I've heard stories. The people in several platoons that you've killed in cold blood. You're a horrible person. I can't live with someone like you. Kyle turned to his love, trying one last time to keep her as he said, Jackie, there's no one else out there for me. I can't love anyone as greatly as I have you. And besides, you're with the military. Fighting is in your nature. As long as you're with me, we'd be invincible. An unstoppable duo. You're the only one for me. No matter what you say or what you do. Not even the Bureau could try to separate us. Their efforts will only be in vain. He grabbed Jacqueline's left hand to gently hold it in both of his while staring affectionately to her eyes as he continued, Please reconsider. You and I can be the most powerful captains in the whole region. All the world's riches will be ours, and no one could dare take that away from us. Our ship, our crew, our love, will have no laws that could tie it down. Jacqueline glanced down, thinking of what to do to respond, then pulled her left hand away from Kayo. Pirate watched in surprise as the Bureau soldier positioned herself for a toss, throwing the jewelry box out into the ocean. Kayo turned to where Jacqueline threw the object while she said, It's over, demon. Don't ever contact me again, unless it's to turn yourself in. The military soldier turned and left the peak, heading back to the bureaucracy's headquarters. Kayo just stared out into the unforgiving sea, tears sliding down his face and falling to the ground at his feet. Heartbroken and alone, the pirate stood hating every second of his life. However, he did not blame his love, for he still cared. Instead, he gripped his fists as he knew how to get her back. The only thing left, other than to take treasure, was to fight the law. He knew how to get through to her. Kill all others that stood for the bureaucracy of Philae. 
At headquarters, Jacqueline was running herself to sleep by first taking a shower in her private quarters in the enormous building. However, it wasn't all that private with a certain someone walking in uninvited. With only a bath towel wrapped around her cleansed body, Jacqueline walked out to get her sleep attire, but stopped as she noticed someone. Captain Gregory, helping himself to a cup of tea, sat at the desk of Jacqueline's workstation. His back was to the bathroom, since he knew she was to appear from there, while he gazed at only a quill set inside a vial of ink. Jacqueline turned to the other bureau captain and angrily barked, Don't you ever knock, soldier? I did, Gregory calmly replied, but you didn't answer. I assumed that something had happened, so I came in to check up on you. Finding you were in the shower, I decided to wait till you had safely exited. You're lucky you're the Vice Admiral's son, while also being set to marry the Admiral Chief's daughter. Otherwise, I'd report you to one of them and have your ass suspended. Jacqueline went to go behind a Shoji screen room divider just to her right to change into her nightgown. While Gregory said, Terribly sorry, Miss Jacqueline, but I have strong feelings for you. Yes, I know. You told me over a million times. I would be devastated if something terrible were to happen to you while I was on duty. So naturally, your safety is of my utmost concern. Jacqueline peeked around the screen and asked, What about Josephina? You are getting married to her, right? Gregory stood up and turned to his comrade and barked, Ridiculous. She means nothing to me. The mere fact that our parents decided we should get married only makes me disapprove of her more. I have no part in loving that wench. Jacqueline motioned back behind the screen as she asked, A wench now is she, Captain? That she is. An unexpected, overly controlling person of a female. She fakes being nice, only to turn around and be aggressive to get what she wants. The very definition of a succubus, pretending to be innocent and cute. Jacqueline moved out from the screen and went to her bedroom, uncaring to Gregory following her. As she went to sit down on her bed, Jacqueline turned to her colleague and asked, So why not tell your father, or decline the marriage? Gregory stood at the doorway as he replied, Because my father highly approves of her, and cares not for my opinion. And telling Josephina herself that I don't wish to be with her only gets me in trouble. Father says he'll remove me from my position if I offend her again and don't go through with the marriage. How unfortunate. Oh well. Jacqueline went to lie on her bed as she picked up a book from her nightstand. Then as she began reading, she said, Escort yourself out, Captain. Please, Miss Jacqueline. I wish to only give my heart to one, and I feel that one's you. Jacqueline glanced over at the man, then looked back into her book as she said, I'll think about it, Gregory. Now please, leave. Gregory saluted his fellow Kanai, then he indeed headed out as he closed her bedroom's doors. After an hour, Jacqueline lowered her book for a moment to think of what she should do between her and Kayo, while also on what to do with Gregory. She pondered until her bedside clock told nine, where she closed her book to put it aside. She blew out the candle nearby and set the clock to be silent, motioning herself to sleep. This concludes the reading of Chapter 2. Thank you all for watching and listening. If you like what you saw and heard, be sure to check out my other two books, Lore of the Endowment and Ryu the Demon Slayer. Links will be in the description below. That being said, stay safe, take care, and we'll see you again in chapter three.